Welcome to part four of our interview with investigative reporter Greg Pallast, who's got some insight onto Jake Tapper's true hackiness. But, you know, it's time that I told the, the truth on these guys. Sure. Jake Tra Tapper worked for me on this on the investigation of the vote theft in Florida in the 2000 race. Really? Okay. We Because Salon brought me in from England to, to expand the story and go into Florida and get, get the real information on how George Bush stole that election by removing black people from the voter rolls. The entire time, Jake did nothing. He didn't do any work at all. He simply dragged his feet and kept, kept saying, this story can't be true. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, wow. so thank you, Jake, for all your, your hard work being the, the anchor around my foot wow. trying to get the story out. Um, you know, because he but it's not that he knew it couldn't be true. He knew that this story was not going to advance his career. That's it. OK, and I'm going to be straight up about it, you know. And also, there's something else in this, too. Jake and like uh, he had a, um, uh, a, a editor, Carrie Louder. I, I, I want to name people. I want to name names. I don't want them to hide anymore. You know, went to Yale, you know, went to, you know, fancy prep schools, all this stuff. You know, these are upper class kids. Right. And I had a black minister who was illegally removed from the voter rolls. He was told he couldn't vote in. And, and it was against it. It violated federal law. OK, because he had a conviction in New York before he found God. He was a crack dealer or whatever. You, you can't move to Florida and suddenly have a new sentence of losing your vote because you don't lose your vote in New York. OK, it's a little sorry if it's a little complicated. I know that you can do it on that. that you can do it on Jimmy Dore. I can't do that in The New York Times if it's complicated. Right. Um, and uh, but anyway, so you had a, you had this minister who had the right to vote and they took it away from him in Florida. And the ACLU was ready to sue. They got my information. They they were they brought a suit and Tapper. Uh, not Tapper, Louder, his, his, the, the, the white editor said to me, and, and I'm sorry if people bring up the point that it's a white editor, but it, that's very important. Right, white prep, it is. prep school, Yale-educated, uh, Yale J school uh, editor said, uh, well, um, uh, why didn't he raise hell when they told him he couldn't, uh, he couldn't vote? I said, this is Alachua County, Florida, where within his memory— they were hanging black people for trying to vote. And you're telling him to pound the table. How? What happens to black men who pound the table in government offices? Yeah. Oh, we thought he was armed, <laughs> they say at his funeral. I feared for my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You know, so, you know, but this is what I was dealing with when I'm dealing with editors. Like, well, why wouldn't the black people say this? And, uh, who was that guy? He used to be a comic. Um, Al Franken. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I was on his show on Air America, uh -huh. and he said to me when I when I was talking about black people being illegally removed from the voter rolls, he said, "Well, if that's true, how come I didn't read it in the New York Times or the Washington he Post?" He said that, wow. and that's what's wrong with Al Franken. That's what Al Franken said to me. I said, and that's what's wrong with Al Franken. I and said, uh, because that's why I wasn't sad um, to see him go. <laughs> you tell me, um, but you know that's why I appreciate being here, and I and I no longer I made a vow to myself I'm no longer going to shut my mouth, I'm no longer going to hide and protect these people who've been jacking you on the news and lying in your face, who are racist and they don't even realize they're racist. I mean, like the editor at Salon, the the prep school white guy and Jake Tapper, all these guys, they don't think that they're racist. They think that they're very progressive, mm -hmm. you know, because they go to parties with uh, Michelle Obama and stuff. And they right. think, well, you know, I'm progressive. You know? Yeah, Michelle Obama is not progressive. And so what happens? Well, but they think I and I'm not racist. She's an, she, she's an old. I'm not racist, but they will <laughs> report new. They'll report stories. They yeah. will doubt questions when black people say I wasn't allowed to vote, etc. They don't appear. I have. I will film people. You know what? The only one. You know, I had. I was in Georgia. Ninety. Uh, Martin Luther King's 92 year old cousin was turned away from the, uh -huh. from the polls right. and I had her on camera mm -hmm. and I had her, her daughter, uh, her, her niece on camera in tears. Like this woman, you know, mm -hmm. this is Martin Luther King's cousin and they wouldn't let her vote. And you know, a bit of that went viral around the net. It didn't go on any news station. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. That wouldn't happen. Right. And, but what I was pointing out, it was, while this is like particularly poignant she was one of 340,134 people wrongly removed. And where have you seen that news? No, it's you don't not see it. there. And I'm losing, you know, it's like, this is hard news, Jimmy. And I'm trying, mm -hmm. trying to see how, what do I have to do? Skywriting? I know. Show my putts on the 101. Uh, I don't know what's left.
You know, I, you know, and, and Venezuela, I got to tell you, Venezuela actually cracked it for me. I just said, this is no longer will I try to play along to, to see if I can break into the U.S. media and be, you know, and, and get a nice job uh -huh. in the U.S. media, you know, work my way in. Like I say, New York Times called me and other, you know, some of the main mainstream people are now saying, well, maybe, um, even yeah. though they, even though the Washington Post did, did cover me once when they said, they said, respected and reporter greg respected investigative reporter greg pals and i quote that respected investigative <laughs> reporter greg pals has lent his name to conspiracy theories uh. that bernie sanders won the california primary and i called up the the i called up the little shit who wrote that story they're and all I pretty said, shitty over there and i said uh, and he was nervous because he was read my Weigel? books in J school. They, they, I think <laughs> was they, it they, Dave Weigel? And I, uh, yeah, yeah. And, Dave and, Weigel is a yeah. fucking shit. Okay, I, we, I would easy. say Ron confronted him at, at a at a rally for Bernie Sanders. He almost shit his pants. And the so, guy's yeah, the so he's very nervous. Coward. He said, "Oh, I'm sorry." He's very nervous. He's a he's, coward. He's a coward. So he said, yeah. "Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry." And I said. I said, when does arithmetic become a conspiracy theory? Here's the numbers. Yeah, he called. Here's he did that to us. He numbers. tried to smear us. Cons conspiracy, you know, conspiracy theory. theory. Yeah, you that's know? his. That's his you know, tool. You know what, what a piece of shit I'm that always called. I get. You know, I'm called a conspiracy theory. You know, I'm what a conspiracy a theorist, which gets a big is. laugh from the conspirators. You mm -hmm. know, and uh, that's how it really works. And so, you know, the, yeah, I said arithmetic's on it. I said also, by the way, you violated a basic rule of journalism. Here's my here's my cell phone. Here's my direct emails. My yeah, he never stuff. called us. And either. I said. I said, if you want to write a story about me, he never me, called me. You know, he never called call me. me up and talk. He's got to me. my fucking number. He, he wrote another me. story attacking me after apologizing for the first one. Of course, he's because without he, calling me, up. Dave Weigel is ordered to write those stories. Exactly, you understand he's that, not, right? Yeah, he's, he's not, not an independent him. thinger. That's why he writes those. You, why do you think he's gainfully employed by the Washington Post to cover right. people I, like I, us? Because he's go, a fucking mouthpiece, Greg. Because that's why I don't go after the little. Glove puppets. I go after the the fists in the glove. Yeah, and that's what my work is about: is uncovering those assholes. So you would and say those vicious Dave Weigel is a glove puppet. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. You right. know, I mean, I, we don't spend much time we, on him. What here I'm did, concerned either. with is whose fingers are in him. That's, right, who's controlling uh, him? Yeah, because he's being controlled, and it's obvious to see yeah. that he writes bullshit like that. It's such bullshit. He did the same thing to us. Didn't call us. He, he wrote a bull fucking smear piece. CNN did the same thing to us. That they're afraid of fucking independent media that actually tells the truth about shit they won't tell the truth about, like the fucking voter scam with Bernie Sanders. Yeah. I mean, and and suddenly I'm like I'm doing I'm taking numbers from the Secretary of State's office, and I'm showing you the arithmetic, and I'm I'm putting up on a screen the numbers. I had to do it at a rally. I can't even get it into a paper, right? So then all I get is this. And by the way, Weigel wasn't there. He pretended he covered my statement <laughs> without actually being there. Of course, he fucking made it up. Of course, he did. He makes up lots of shit. But I, again, Weigel, I don't care he, about him. He's just a factotum. I don't care. He, yeah, he's not Washington a, he's, Post. These are nothings because what they are, they're not reporters. They're repeaters. He's a repeater. And that's the problem. Is that is it's And a smearer, echoing. by the way. If you yeah, if yeah. the if oh, the establishment yeah. doesn't want you, they'll he'll smear them for you. And he's ordered to do so. Yeah, I mean, like, why exactly was I mean the Washington Post doesn't, you know, ignores me and suddenly I'm being attacked for what I've said. Like, well, wait, right. why don't you you know, I'm suddenly important to you, right? And what Greg Palace says is suddenly, suddenly it's important. Suddenly, you know, yeah. When they need someone to hold up to smear, yes. because they're worried that my words would, that my arithmetic yeah. would get out there, and they say, "Hey, wait, hey, Greg Sanders. Palace is telling the truth about what happened in California. We got to get, <laughs> yeah. hey, Dave Weigel, could you write a smear piece on him? Call him a conspiracy theorist. That's the one we always go to. It works. It, yeah, that's exactly what Dave Weigel does. Yeah, I lent my name. Yeah, <laughs> to the conspiracy. You lent your name to a conspiracy theory. Dave Weigel lent his name to lying publicly on Twitter about Jeff Bezos and the CIA, and fucking Jagoff me caught him. That's what you let your name you. to, and he has no integrity. The only reason why he still has a job and people are is because they're all full of shit. Journalism sucks in America. For two years, they've been pushing a fucking Russia Gate conspiracy theory at the top of their lungs. Why calling people who are telling the truth about the election? Greg Palace, a conspiracy theorist. That's what the Washington Times does. That's what the New York Times does. That's what CNN and MSNBC does, and that's why I have a fucking job. You know, they had in, in Michigan. They had. Supposedly Trump won by 10,700 votes. 75,000 ballots were not read in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Okay? 70, in fact, 75,355 votes. I know the arithmetic. And they said, well, we don't know because the machines couldn't read those ballots because the machines broke down. 87 machines broke down. So what happened, Jimmy, 
is that 87 machines broke down in Detroit. By the way, Detroit, Wayne County, told the, the g Republican governor, we need money for new machines. The machines aren't going to work. The machines are going to break down. Oh, what a terrible thing that the machines will break down in Detroit. They don't reach 75,000 votes. Whose votes were they? Were they Donald Trump's in Detroit? That is the problem. So we have, so like I say, you have this, and so it's Jim Crow in Michigan, not just in Caracas. You've got, this is the big problem, and that was not covered anywhere. Instead, it's the Russians. And Russia, I gotta tell you, it's I've Russia. Been, I was in Michigan, and I don't think, and I, did, I saw, met all these auto workers in Michigan and Ohio. They voted for Bernie Sanders in the primary. They voted for Donald Trump in the general election. And and I don't think it's because they got a they saw a Facebook ad from Russia. They you know what they said is we're getting screwed out of our jobs. And I'm I agree that Donald Trump lied to them and bullshitted them. But it was not Donald. You know, it wasn't the Russians that told Hillary Clinton don't campaign in Wisconsin. And when you're in Michigan and when you're in Detroit, make sure that you promote uh, the that you promote NAFTA. Great. OK, the Russians must have told her to do that because that's the only way that, that, that that's the only way that I could conceive that Russia fixed the election. Right. And, the, and and you know, it wasn't Russia that didn't count those seventy five thousand black ballots. It was the Republican controlled governor who made sure that those ballots wouldn't be counted. And by the way, when Hillary Clinton had sent her lawyers into the courtroom in Lansing, Michigan, and and the uh, and if you remember, it was. Um, Jill Stein, who had paid yes. for, she said, okay, it wasn't a recount. People have that wrong. She wasn't talking about a recount. What she was saying is take those 75,000 uncounted ballots the machines couldn't read and use a better machine called the human eyeball to read them, <laughs> and then Hillary will have won the presidency or, or she would yeah. have won Michigan's elect, uh, electoral, electoral votes. votes. Trump sent in lawyers who said, Jill Stein has no right to have these votes. She didn't, have standing. Standing. She didn't have standing. So they talked, so the judge asked Hillary Clinton's lawyers who are sitting in the courtroom and say, well, what do you want to do? Because Hillary Clinton has standing. What does the, you know, what does Secretary Clinton want? And they said, we are only here to observe. And so they why let do those you think black that votes is? get uncounted. And so why do you think that is, Greg? Why wouldn't it's obviously in Hillary Clinton's uh, interest to, to want to have those votes counted? Why wouldn't she want them counted? Uh, Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton have, an, have publicly stated that their current net worth is a quarter yeah. billion dollars. Billion. Question answered. Okay. We're announcing our dates for 2019. We're going to Ventura Comedy Club, March 31st, Tempe, Arizona, Austin, Texas, Portland, Chicago, and lots more. Go to jimmydorkcomedy.com for a list of all our dates and live shows. And please become a patron. We give you hours of bonus material. And please make sure you're subscribed. Even if you think you're subscribed, they unsubscribe people every day, and you might be one of them. Check to make sure you're subscribed, and then you have to click the bell twice. So they send you a notification when we drop a video. Thanks for your support.